Eternally Yours, a program of inspiring music and an eternal message of hope. On today's program, Ray Williams continues his testimony. Our musical guest is Suzanne DeGroote, worship leader of the Eternity Club. And Reverend Mabley's sermon is titled, What Can Adversity Teach Us? Now let's join Reverend Mabley and her guest, Ray Williams. Welcome once again to Eternal Yours Testimony Time. This man of God has been on the telecast for several times, and when you order the DVD, you'll get all of them. And, and, to, and he's such an encourager. I've been sitting here encouraged so much by this man. You will be too. He's true blue man of God with a love for God. And so today I welcome once again the senior saint, Raymond Winston Williams. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. 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 You know, I think I should start by saying I really feel I'm in the right place at the right time. The very best feeling you could ever have. Like I tell Arnie, I pray not so much for his happiness, but for a sense of fulfillment. Mm. Because you cannot have a sense of fulfillment without knowing you're right in the center of God's will. And I pray for him every day along those lines. He is so blessed to have you. Yes. I'm also deeply thankful for these testimonies I'm able to share. Um, I feel so undeserving because where some people would say, I'm sinning in this regard and that regard, fighting, divorce, and who knows what, really. I've sinned in another respect by inadvertently wanting to help people, but doing it the occult way. And perhaps it's not even worthwhile mentioning these various things that got involved in, except to say that I always maintain a high level of honor and integrity throughout all of this, and met very many well-meaning people who were sincere, but sincerely wrong. So That's what the occult is all about. They're sincere in it, but they're sincerely wrong. The only spirit you want within your life is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, So I'm inclined to tell the people to watch out, seek Mm -hmm. God, Mm -hmm. trust that God will lead you and guide you in the way that you should go, and he will not disappoint you. But here's a little incident that took place when... There was tension within this particular Christian brother that I belong to. They wanted to depose the the man who started it all, the founding father. And there was a world convention. I went to this particular hotel and had my delegates' papers. And we were warned we're not going to get into this hall. There were about 2,500 delegates from all over the world without these delegate papers. Who should I see there but my dear brother Arnie? I asked him, I approached him and asked him if he had any delicate papers. He said, no. So I went to this desk, took out my papers, and I said, present them to him. And I said, will you please let this man in on my recognizance? Fine. I immediately knew this was of God. Oh, for sure. It so happened. I feared I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you what happened the night before. Came home. I was dressed pretty well as I now. I can picture it all. Great pants, blazer. Got blue tie. Wife's in the kitchen. She went a, a home ahead of me. And I was in the habit of pacing up and down, especially in the office, and say, Mary, call so and so, or check on this and that and the other night. Walk back and forth and give her some instructions. Did the same thing in the kitchen. So Mary called the Sheraton Hotel. And I said, Get hold of so and so. And she said, What? I'd rather not mention the man's name because most of you would know him. Mm. And um, I said, she got hold of not only him, but his wife. She said he was in the shower. And I looked at her and I said, tell her we love her. Tell her she's welcome here. And I don't know why I'm doing this. But of course they'd be welcome in the city. Well, I found out the next day, they weren't even on the VIP list of people to be picked up at the airport because there was a group that wanted to depose them. Mm. So meanwhile, Arnie's sitting on my right-hand side at the meeting, and there's tension building. One would go up to the mic and say, brothers, in terms of so-and-so, we can do this, that, and the other, and so forth. You could feel the tension. Arnie's sitting like this, and he turned his head to me, uh, head around like this, and said, Ray, 
if God wants you to say something, you'd better say it now. So I looked at her, I threw my head back, and I said, yes, Ollie, it's boiling in my belly. Well, I threw my head back, my mouth opened, and I was shocked at the voice, the powerful voice that came out of me, telling these men, choose ye this day under whom you will serve, under Satan or under my anointed servant. That's not me. <laughs> it's absolutely not me. So, this is 1987, about, around about then. And since then, the Lord has actually come into my life and given me all kinds of words for people, as he wills. And it's amazing how, much people, how many people I was able to encourage by so doing. But here's a man who opened, the, God used to open the door. Arnie Bryant opened the door, and you're involved <laughs> with Prayer Canada, and have been for how many years? Actually, as I said earlier this evening, about 30 years and two weeks. That's a long time. You're a faithful prayer. You're a faithful intercessor and supporter of Prayer Canada. Absolutely. Do you know how many prayer posts that senior man, who's now 94 at this time, how many prayer posts him and his wife Kathy have uh, birthed? Do you, do you know? It's over 200, I understand. Uh, I think it's almost 300. Over 300, no. And you know that he has even inspired, with your backup prayers, because you pray for him every day, as you said, uh, Arnie Bryan, 94, going strong for Jesus. He's the only man I know personally that I can call, could call father. He's old enough to be my dad. And um, they have just so birthed all these prayer meetings. It's just absolutely incredible. And your prayers help to support that and well, whatever sure. finances, too. I really admire the senior saints. You know, we need to pay attention to the senior saints and what they're saying. Amen. Yeah. It's such a joy to have the you on the The stories how I met the man is a miracle and so. What delegation were you at where all this was happening and you got these words from the Lord? It would be wise if I just left it at that. Oh, okay. You I know think I, mean? I know what it was. It was a long time ago. Yeah, I think it was. I, I feel it was just, but it was a, a fairly big group. I have a word for you that I believe is from the Lord. You know, you were a late bloomer making the fuller decision for Christ. Amen? Amen? But the scripture says, those that are forgiven much, love much. You have a deep capacity, Brother Raymond, to move the heart of God. Because when you pray, it's from the depths of your heart. And that's why he speaks to you so clearly. And that's why you have this wonderful walk with God. It's a love walk. Christianity is a love relationship with our Creator through Jesus Christ the Lord, Amen. who is your Lord and mine. And we never cease to amaze, you know, that song that we keep falling in love with Him over and over again. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> and you really love God. Yeah. And any of your family and your friends that are watching, uh, it's been a real joy to meet this man, and I know that he is an encourager. Thank you for encouraging me, encouraging the people, and being on the telecast. Thank you. Thank you. God Amen. bless you.
Thank you, Suzanne de Groot, for that anointed music. Suzanne does worship from time to time at our revival healing services where we always see the miraculous. If you call in to the number that will be on the screen, you'll find out when we're having our next one. We usually have six a year. And now sharing from my heart in Christ to your dear hearts, a message I've entitled, What Do We Do in Adversity? What can we learn from adversity? More important, <laughs> it's really, really important to think about these things, to talk about them, to be open. Because even when you have Jesus Christ as Lord, even when you're yielded to his Lordship, reading the Bible, praying, going to church, doing your best to be a good Christian person, you still can have troubles. I can prove that to you by the word of God. Look at the troubles St. Paul had, and he wrote most of the New Testament. He knew the word and he knew the Lord. And God gave him strength and God brought him through and God will give us strength in adversity. Yes, he will. So I want to share some things that God has put on my heart to help for any one of you that are going in adversity, through adversity. We all get them, that's for sure. <laughs> Hallelujah, troubles come. The first one is we are to trust God. Oh yes, we are to trust God. And as much as you and I trust God, sometimes I do it myself. I say, Lord, help me trust you more. And I'm so glad this verse is in the Bible. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. See, some things we just don't know what to do or why it's come upon us. Second Chronicles 20, the man of God was in that place and he said to the Lord, Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Hallelujah. And that's where our eyes are to be also. And then God fought for them. If you read 2 Chronicles 20, it's amazing. And the battle really was won by praising God. Hallelujah. When they praised God, God set ambushments against their enemies. They didn't even have to fight the enemies. Amazing. Psalm 37, verse 5. Commit your way to the Lord and trust him. Trust him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring to pass, bring you out of your trying time, bring you out of your struggle. For indeed, many are the trials of a godly person, but he promised to bring us out of all of them. That's in Psalm 34, verse 19. In Psalm 30, verse 5, it says, For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy does come in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night with a lost one or whatever might happen to us. Weeping may endure for a night simply because we're reaping what we sowed. We've made mistakes, we've done bad things, and the Bible does say you reap what you sow. And even when you ask God to forgive you, and he does, and the holy blood of Jesus washes you whiter than snow, some things that we've done are irreversible. It's just... There's no way out. You, you, things will happen from what we do. But God is with us in our trying times. When you turn to the Lord, he is with you. He said in Matthew 28, he said, Lo, I am with you always. He will never forsake you, nor leave you, nor me. The key is have Jesus Christ as Lord. And then you can have all the blessings that are in the Word of God and all the strength that God can give you. See, if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord, you're going to have troubles. It's like going on the wrong road. And the enemy's right there to make life difficult. But if you have Jesus Christ as Lord and you turn to him in your adversity, God is with you in it. Hallelujah. He will bring you out pure gold, exercise your faith muscle for many of the trials of a godly person, but the Lord brings us out of all of them more knowing him, more deeper relationship, and more about that in a moment. 2 Corinthians uh, 12, verse 9 tells us, he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities, my weakness, that the power of Christ rests upon me. Paul said that. Glory, he said that. And as I get on in years, more and more, I say to the Lord what Paul said, I glory in my weaknesses that the power of Christ rests upon me. We all got them. 
I don't know, sometimes I wonder if uh, God still allows us to have some shortcomings to keep us very humble, and it does. Glory in the weakness you feel in your trying times, and say to God, and I do, and he's awesome to answer, Father, I glory in this trouble I'm in and how I'm feeling about it, that your power rests upon me like it did upon St. Paul. Paul was in deep trouble. He was buffeted by Satan, and he asked God three times to take it away, and God said, my grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient for us. His power made perfect in weakness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We all got them. So the first thing is trust God. The second thing is he is sufficient to help us in it. And he wants us to bring, bring us through it in deeper relationship with him. I believe adver adversity helps us in relationship with God. After following the Lord at this time and season, about 35 years, it seems to me that uh, every time I get in trouble, as deeper as I think I am with God in our relationship, the love relationship, I find I can deepen it. <laughs> It just deepens somehow in trying times. Hallelujah. He's right there with you in it. It is actually to be stepping stones to faith. So God is sufficient to help us. He wants us to trust us. And the third point is, it's to encourage our faith and stretch your, and strengthen your faith muscle. Hallelujah. A stepping stone to strength to more faith. Faith. He will comfort you. He says that in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at verse 2. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. See, God will comfort you and I in our adversities as we come to the God of comfort. You can say, Father, it is written, you're a God of comfort. Comfort me in this situation, and he will. You have his word on it. He comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort where we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds by Christ. Wherein we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same suffering, which we also suffer. Or whether we are comforted, it is for your consolation. Which means, in a nutshell there, that if we turn to God in our adversity, our trying times, and we all get them, as I said earlier, he will comfort us in the midst of it. And then, when others have adversity, which they do too, we'll be able to comfort them by the comfort wherein God gave us comfort. And it really helps us to relate to other people having troubles when we have some of our own. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Remember, he will comfort you. You have his word on it. He will be with you. Isaiah 43, verse 2. When you pass through the waters, and I look at them as waters of troubles. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, saith the Lord. And through the rivers, sometimes it can come in like a flood, but the Lord will build up his standard. Hallelujah. When you walk through the, through the, the fire, it shall not burn you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. For God is with you. God is for you. Holy Adonai, which is God's name that means God in all his attributes and powers, he is for you. Yes, he's for you. He's for me. He loves you with an everlasting love. Hallelujah. So the coming to a really important part about what to do in adversity. I believe adversity is to be a bridge. A bridge to a deeper walk with God a bridge to more faith, a bridge to more strength, a bridge to have even a greater testimony. So you know, and I know, that every bridge has two rails. One rail on this bridge is God is in control. Yes, God is in control. He knew the adversity was going to happen before it happened. He's not fretting. And sometimes I say to him, Lord, you knew this was going to happen before it happened, and you're not worried, so I'm not going to be. <laughs> God is sovereign. 
It says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17, Now unto the King eternal, immortal, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. God Almighty is everywhere. God Almighty is all-powerful. God Almighty is all-knowing. Satan can't say that. No one can say that but God. And he says it in his word. He is sovereign. So God is in control no matter how bad it looks. Now that's one rail. The second rail is, hallelujah, God Almighty who's in control and all-powerful, who loves you and me, and who's on our side. God said in his word, Romans 8, 28, that's the second rail. God Almighty works, works all things to good for you who love God and are called. He's working it to good. So we grab hold of one rail. God, you're in control. God, you're working something to good. I don't know what you're working to good because it's so rough. I don't know, Father God, what you can work to good out of this mess. But Father, you said it. I choose to believe it. That settles it. I think faith like that, persevering faith like that in the midst of trials can really shake your world for good. One time I was having so much trouble. My marriage had broken up. The finances were in great despair. And then I heard in college that if everything's falling apart in your world, just do something normal. So I thought, I'm just going to go upstairs and make the bed. So I'm marching upstairs, tears rolling down, and God spoke to my thoughts. And he said, basically, daughter, don't you know I'm using the enemy to make you strong? I started to laugh. I thought, oh, hallelujah. Somehow, some way, God will turn it to good in our adversities. We don't need to fall apart. Amen. Coming to a close in the last few moments in this tender time, I, I know a lot of you are going through great adversity. It can be health problems, relationship problems, loss of loved ones, financial despair. There's a lot of that in the world in these days. But whatever the adversity is, God is greater. First John 4.4, 4, greater is Christ in us as people than the enemy in the world. He's greater than the problems, and he is in control, and he can work all things together for good. And so I really want to share with you a couple of closing verses that are dear to my heart. 2 Corinthians 4, 16, 17. Which cause we faint not, which means we don't give up, never give up. It's not an option. We don't give up. Though our outward man perish, in other words, the older the outward appearance is getting older in you and me. Yet the inward man is renewed every day. If you have Jesus Christ as Lord, your spirit is renewed by the Holy Spirit every day. God's word says so. And then he says, our light affliction, which is but for a moment, works, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Glory. God says everything we're going through, all the adversary, is going to work for us an eternal weight of glory. Hallelujah. I, I can't even grasp what that fully means, and I don't think you can either. But it does mean it's not for naught. It does mean that somehow, some way, in the here and now, and in the by and by, God's going to work something wonderful. And so let us turn to God and give him our cares and give him our burdens in closing prayer. Won't you join me, dear ones? Oh, Father in heaven, offering the sacrifice of thanks and the things we're going through and have gone through. Oh, for some of us, Lord, it's so horrendous. And yet we choose by the power of the Holy Spirit 
help it to be so in their lives and mine. We choose to trust you, Abba, you are in control. Your word is true that says you work all things, you work all things to good for us who love you and are called. And your word says, even though we're going through things, which is a moment and compared to eternity, Lord God, it's working, it's working for us a far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory in the, in the eternal deep future. Thank you for that, Father God. I choose to believe your word that you will bring us through pure gold. And I pray you help them as well. I pray an anointing on each one of them that lifts the cares, lifts the burdens as you help us, Lord. In Jesus' holy name, amen. If this telecast has ministered to you, would you please prayerfully consider becoming a financial partner that we may continue to reach out for God's glory. It would be wonderful to hear from you.